Yo, what is going on, people? Welcome to Throwdown, episode 481. I'm your host, Tony Polanco, and tonight I'm joined by Emilio Lopez. Sup, people? How's it going? Carlos Romero. Yo, yo, yo. Richard Bailey Jr. What's up, everybody? Returning once again, Mr. Brett Murdoch. <laughs> Ayo. And Brian Monjoma. What up, what up, what up? All right, we're back with another one. Uh, Brett, good to have you back, sir. People have missed you. Uh, they specifically wanted you oh. on the Sunday show, you know? Um, oh, well, I'm uh, happy to be here. I will be on this Sunday show with all kinds of answers for all kinds of questions. Yes. How, how, was, uh, how, was, your, how was your Odin sleep slash uh, <laughs> hyperbaric time chamber resting? Honestly, it, it, it was good. The uh, the convention we went to was, uh, I don't know, man, if you've ever been to a situation like this, like where you, you get an invitation to a convention, you go and you find out when you get there that it's kind of hot garbage Shit. and that you're not going to make much money while you're there. <laughs> yep. I've had that. Uh, and, you're, and you're like, cool. Well, here's just, I guess, three days of wasting my time. I mean, the way the way I, the, the way I sort of treated it is like, oh, if it's a, especially if it's a city I hadn't gone to. I'd just be like, all right, I know this is going to be a shit show, but, you know, at least I'm going to make the best of wherever the hell I'm at right now. And that's the way I sort of sort of see it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we kind of, kind of worked the best. It was it was just it was small. It didn't help. It was it was local. It was um, it was people kind of trying to get one off the, the ground, but they did not advertise it enough. And it was not very big. And the venue they were having mm-hmm. it in was um union station so it, it was supposed to be you know kind of kind of fancy kind of upscale but yeah. union station has the worst echo ever so to have like a stage where they're playing music and doing contests in a oh place that God. it was just the war you're just being bombarded I, with music from like 12 different sources and all of it echoing from all different like that it was the sound of pure insanity that that is exactly the situation where we had uh, what was it called Keystone Comic Con here in Pennsylvania, and they had they absolutely didn't advertise it. Mostly nobody came, and the, instead of a, a a a concert, there was a wrestling ring, and it was constantly they're just throwing each other, and you couldn't talk at all to anybody. Because it was just this loud, obnoxious. They'd have their entrance music. They'd have this. They had this loud slamming noise, and then at one <laughs> point they had some band come through. It was just wow. atrocious. Uh, yeah, I mean, can't win them all. Hopefully, they learn. They learn mm-hmm. what went right, what went wrong, and next year they fix it. Though I'll, I'll be honest, I don't know if I'm going next year. That was. Uh, I'm done. I think I'm done with local conventions. It's just a worse version of being at my shop. Well, I mean, I, you know what I would say, like, yeah, like if it's a, if it's, if it's a, 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 a place that's out there that's inviting you would be a good if it's good because at least gets you somewhere not so not home that's home all the time. The other thing is also just look into the convention and be like, hey, yeah, this is this is this legit because <laughs> I, obviously it's a startup one, but yeah. It's, yeah, it's hard to tell when those I get I get offers for those like startup cons all the damn time. And I kind of let them, <laughs> yeah, I kind of let them slide a little bit because obviously they're desperate to get people in seats to sort of, you know, get to get people in. Yeah. But I don't know. Yeah. yeah okay. It's, okay it's so here's, here's, here's the deal. Uh, my, fr- my friend Heather, who's who, a friend and coworker, Heather, um, got sponsored by one of the, the people who was also sponsoring the show slash one of the co-producers of the show. And so yeah. when we got into the convention where they were like, hey, um, we're going to put you next to Heather. So, like, you can all kind of work as a shop. Um, but instead, when we got there, like, they had separated all of the sponsored artists at the very end cap and then dropped everybody else kind of sprinkled out. Uh, so we, we ended up being actually away from the convention hall. So they ended up splitting our shop basically in half. Um, which was super inconvenient and yeah, it was, it was weird and, and I, I don't know, man, like it was, we went because 
she was friends with one of the promoters, and then the promoters kind of boned us by splitting us up. So, yeah. Not, yeah. Not, not super. Yeah. Well, regardless, even though uh, the convention was not great, uh, we are glad to have you back, man. It's good stuff. Thanks. Good to be back. All right. And shout out to Chris Seely, who just showed up. So, hopefully, up, the storms Chris? aren't too crazy out there, man. Yo, yo. I, I, I'll, I'll tell you something weird in, in Texas. I don't know if uh, if Carlos notices this. How come they knew two weeks before the eclipse that we we're going to have bad, uh, like cloudy weather and not be able to see it? Yet I got three alerts and, and texted before the show that I got dangerous thunderstorms. Oh, we might lose power. And then the shit just dissipates. It doesn't even come here. It's like, what the crazy. fuck? Oh, yeah. I mean, and that was only uh, an hour ago. It's it's uh it's it's big state syndrome where it's like it it could hit you or it could not hit you. It could probably be just part of uh Austin or <laughs> just you know yeah, it happens it happens here too. Yeah. All right, it's man. Been windy as fuck though. Oh shit. By El Paso, Carlos. Yeah. Food. These last couple of these last couple, last couple of days have been hella windy. I yo, guess. man, you got to tell Storm to cool it, yo. She, she's all like, yeah, right. winds, power. <laughs> <laughs> all right, man. Um, let's get into it, man. So this week was kind of a mixed bag. Nothing really prevalent happening, but some interesting, st- interesting stuff regardless. Uh, first thing I want to talk about. Um, oh, shit, I got the link wrong here, but let me uh, get this. I want to talk about Yoko Taro, man. Uh, director of Nier Automata of... Um, What's the other one, Manny? Um, the Replicant, uh, Dragon Guard. Dragon Guard. That's the one I was looking for. Among others, mm-hmm. a very eccentric guy. That's the one that you hit. That's the one you gave a really bad rating to. Was it Dragon Guard three? Yeah, Dragon Guard three. The uh, the the fanboys weren't happy with me about that. You know, <laughs> um, and that was initially why when when Near Automata was announced, I was like, I don't know about that. I didn't like the Dragon Guard 3, but it was by Platinum, so I'm like, let me give it a shot, and I'm glad I did, because it's great, and obviously the game is so good that it inspires Stellar Blade. It's not even any mincing words. The director, um, Kim, that's his last name. I don't know what it's like. I don't. I gotta look at his first name. Maybe pronounce it correctly, but Kim, he's like, yeah, that's one of my biggest inspirations, but anyway, so IG, actually, we gotta go back a little bit, because we talked about this before, right? How a couple weeks ago, IG and France Let's just say it. They insulted um, Shift Up and Kim, you know, over Stellar Blade. Um, and then IGN America, you know, core IGN, they stepped it back. Hey, we, you know, we don't condone any any of that. And we th- now we think we know why because of this interview. So they interviewed Yoko Taro and, uh, and Kim just talking about their creative process and stuff. And Yoko Taro had like nothing but love and praise for Stellar Blade. As a matter of fact, he said he thinks Stellar Blade is a better game than Nier Automata. Um, he, if his two main reasons was he thinks that Stellar Blade has better graphics and better uh, gameplay, more challenging gameplay. Uh, but obviously, you know, that could be up for interpretation because maybe you want the simpler gameplay, you know? And even... I think... Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I think the thing about it is like also, you know, despite, you know, obviously near uh, Automata doing very well and the other, you know, doing very well, Yoko Taro, a lot of his, you know, you know, dealing with the, the you know, with the, um, with the, 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 you know, the, the inability to do things is he usually does it with story. So he yeah. has an initial idea. But it'll always be, you know, something's like, OK, either the company, you know, the, the, the developers can't handle it or whatever. So he fills in the blanks with the story. I, I at least, you know, I haven't played this game yet, but I suspect there was no limitations for, you know, Mr. Kim here because, you know, he, you know, he got to do the thing. He probably got to do most of the things he wanted because he had the development team that could could perform, especially uh, for previous for Yoko Tagro's previous titles before um near automata he didn't have platinum games he had this other studio which wasn't very good yeah no you're right because like when i played near automata i'm like oh there's like a better dragon guard you know like dragon guard with good controls that's the way i felt about it you know still had that quirkiness and weirdness but yo this is yoko taro you know he's a very eccentric guy he still runs it's, around with that near automata thing, thing fucking about- you know helmet or whatever 
the thing, yeah, the thing about it is, it's because he, you know, when, when it, like the the weird the the weirdness, of, I, of the, to be honest, I feel should never really come from the actual gameplay. Like you should, there shouldn't be, you know, obviously if you have a little bit of challenge, that's great, but it should never really be a, like you shouldn't be thinking about the how how horrible the gameplay is. You really should be thinking about the content of the game. And I think that's what that's the big difference between his, you know, Yoko's early titles and his his later titles. He actually had people, you know, he had a team that could actually perform the thing that he wanted them to do yeah. as opposed to just being like, oh, pff, well, I can't do this shit. All right. Let's put a let's put a text adventure in the middle of the game. Yeah, <laughs> because I couldn't put that part in. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Crazy stuff like that. Um, but yeah, he and he also said that you know playing Stellar Blade made him jealous, <laughs> which is interesting. Um, you know, it, it, he, it, yeah. Go ahead. He's very bl- usually he's very blunt and also a bit joking. Yeah. When it comes to that stuff, like he'll say stuff like, "I don't like the the, the director of the 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 publisher at Square Enix because he's too handsome, and I don't like handsome people." Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yoko Taro is <laughs> a character, man. <laughs> he's just a character. Yeah, he's a character. Um, but yeah, so it was kind of cool. Him, you know, it's like Senpai noticed me, you know. Um, very cool stuff right there. And then, and go ahead. The other thing, the other thing about Kim to know, and this is also gets mentioned inside of the article, is that he is the he was the him. He actually got started. He's younger than Yoko Taro, but he got started in the game industry before Yoko before him, Taro yeah. because yes, because he worked. Uh, he was the the illustrator. And designer for uh you know character designer for magna carta and you know that's that's like blast from the past right there like uh, like uh, chris you remember magna carta the big old the the well the playstation 2 game and that giant book that that, that we used to, we have oh yeah I mean, yeah, you yeah probably yeah. should still have it but yeah oh yeah that's the a, same yeah. it's the same guy it's the same guy and so it's like you know, Yoko Taro also sort of mentions in that interview, and he's like, you know, I, I, I like it's it's interesting because he's like, I see you as like, you know, I'm inspired by you because of Magna Carta, but I'm older than you, <laughs> you know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He, ga- I'm older than you, but you've been in the game industry longer than me. Yeah, he says that he considers him the elder in the gaming industry. You know, even though yes, he is you know physically older than him. Um, but yeah, no, obviously, you know, Mr. Kim there hasn't really hit the fact that he's been inspired by Nier Automata. He says like, yeah, I also wanted to make a, like a big game with like, you know, an action heroine in a devastated world, but, you know, doing my own way and all that. Um, so it's, it's been, um, kind of cool just seeing that then. And I think, um, Yoko Taro brought this up. It's like, yeah, we made this game, you know, and like no one else has kind of done this. So it's kind of fitting that somebody else would eventually come in and do their own near automata type of game, which is, it's a good point. It's like, okay. Cause that game came out when near automata 2018, I want to say, um, 2017, 2018, I think 2018. And in the year since we haven't had any like inspired games by it, which is interesting, you know, 17, 17. Okay. Yeah. That was the year. Right. Um, and then, the, you know, but, but you know, but obviously Stellar Blade, like many other games, are inspired by uh, by Souls Combat. So that's in there. And that's the other thing Yoko Taro said. It's like, I feel this game, is, he felt the game is better on a, on a gameplay standpoint because it's more challenging, you know? Um, even though I, I, like, it depends on the type of person, you know? Um you know, and based off demo, because I, I obviously I can't. I've you know played celebrate. I beat the game, but I can't give you my impressions yet. So I'll just be just based off the demo. That demo when I dropped, it made people go, okay, this isn't just you know an ass and cheat game. This is some real shit. You know, but you know, but you know, it's it's very interesting because that's the same pl- that's the same thing that near uh, Automata did. They put out this demo, and they're like, here, play this game. You know, check it out. And I feel like I noticed that there's a kind of a resurgence of demos. I know, noticed notice that, that? Yeah. Like, I noticed that. Yeah. There's a lot of games that are coming out with like, you know, pretty, pretty, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, you know, meaty demos like this game on its own. Uh, Those demos remember, definitely meaty. Yeah. It, it, hmm. it, you know, like, yeah, people are like playing, playing for 50 hours. But yeah, it's like they, they, you know, you could literally, um, you know, you can literally, you know, be, begin your progress from where you left off when you play the, the full game. It's pretty nuts. Yeah. 
No, you're right about that. It is nice to see more and more demos dropping, you know. Uh, by the way, real quick, uh, shout out to Fergus Mills. You already know. Hanging out in the shout chat. Out to Fergus Mills. And, of course, Mr. Up. Yeah, the hookup. And, of course, uh, Mr. Otaku Man, you know. Shout out to him. Um, but, yeah, it was just kind of nice. Instead of seeing, like, developers bickering each other, you guys were just, you know, talking about their craft. You know, talking about their uh, games. It's, it's be- <laughs> it's uh, yeah it's, it's you know they're not coming out of the woodwork saying how bad the game design is like a certain studio was doing uh, talking all that shit you mr U- mr ubisoft yeah. was it ubisoft it was ubisoft on, on on elden ring yeah thank yeah, you it, it was yeah yeah they, they it was a ubisoft developer thank you manny I, there's actually a ubisoft thing we do need to discuss i don't have in the show notes that i need to drop in here if adam was here he'd be talking about it for sure you know um well the other thing also go ahead whoever was talking oh, no. i just said i just said oh um also very interesting both of these guys were inspired by uh neon genesis evangelion you could see that in their works obviously you know that's pretty evident but taking it in a different direction in that series you know um yeah it's good yeah stuff. i hate yeah. i i hate it i hate anything that that uh the ono guy makes <laughs> most of, the stuff that most of it, yeah, because you like you like Gunbuster and you like um, what you call it. Um, my God. I like Gunbuster and um, you know uh, the Secret of Blue Water. There you go. Yeah, you and, like those. Uh, yeah, yeah. I like those too, but eh, everything else, I don't know. Shinji's a wuss. <laughs> yeah, well, it's Evangelion. You don't like, and you don't like Shin Godzilla either. I I I like I really like Shin Godzilla, but I didn't like I did not like Shin Ultraman. <laughs> I did not like that. Go ahead, man. You were you were uh, muted. You were muted again. Ah, I also said I didn't care too much for Shin Kamen Rider. Yeah, yeah. yeah. After after Shin Ultraman, I'm like, I think I'm good. You know. Although I did see a video over the weekend that kind of put the movie into context with regard to the show. I'm like, okay, I probably just won't like the show then. <laughs> you know. Um, you know, Tokusatsu stuff is generally fun. Um. All right. Um, anything else you guys want to say about um, this uh, interview? It's a pretty long interview, too, man. Pretty crazy. Um, but obviously, you know, Rich and I can't really speak too much about Celebrity just yet. You know. Uh, again, obviously, obviously, IGN uh, trying to keep uh, keep their uh, their cards in order there, especially when you have a big interview with two with with a game of uh, somebody who has the, the most anticipated game and one of the most beloved video game creators ever and all of a sudden uh you know you, st- so you have some guy some guy from the, from uh from the other uh the other branch start talking smack yeah and insult being insulting and then he doubled down too that's the other thing wrote wrote this you other know, stupid know. post Talk about like, oh, you know, what, looking at women like that is gonna gonna make girls commit suicide. I'm like, okay, bro. Okay, yeah, that bro. guy. That guy really needs to get his his shit in check. Like, he really needs to he needs to sit back and think about it for a second. You know. But anyway. All right. Um, I'm I'm throwing this story in now. It was not in the show notes, but we gotta talk about it. Um, did you like the crew? Adam liked the crew. Brian, you liked the crew. What a game. Um, apparently, Ubisoft is stripping people's licenses for the game. You bought it digitally. Um, can't play it. Won't be able to play it. Uh oh. Isn't that interesting? Whoa, whoa, wait a minute. Yeah. Wait, they just, they just, yeah. Uh, wait ahead, a minute Rich. is right. Go ahead, Rich. Yeah, I know hey, you've been on. keeping up in touch with this. Oh no, I, I, I didn't hear this news. Oh. This is a. This is a. Uh, yeah, this is absolutely ridiculous. But no, continue. Yeah, let's I need get, to hear more about this. Yeah, let's get into this, man. So I'm, I'm going to read this story off a uh, PC gamer. Ubisoft is stripping people's licenses for the crew weeks after it shut down, nearly squandering hopes of fan servers and acting as a stark reminder of how volatile digital ownership is. We've been telling you this, mm-hmm. people. Um, so I'm going to read the article. The downside of digital ownership has reared its ugly head for uh, enjoyers of Ubisoft's open world multi player racer the crew the publisher has revoked its license for those who owned it on ubisoft connect 
almost destroying fan ambitions to revive the game in both an offline and online format. The crew was pulled from sale back in December with Ubisoft revealing that the servers would be shut down at the beginning of April. Frustratingly, despite a large portion of the game being downloadable in single player, the crew remained an online only endeavor throughout its decade long lifespan that had already rendered the game unplayable. But it seems Ubisoft is determined to take things one step further to stamp out any attempts to continue playing uh, its past uh, expiry date. This is some crazy shit. Uh, fans began to notice earlier in the week that the license to the game had been snatched away from them. A message at the top of the game's library page reads, here's what it reads. You no longer have access to this game. Why not check out the store to pursue your adventures? That's insulting. Um, it's also been moved to its own individual section and in player libraries listed under inactive games apparently booting the game directly from the installation directory will still launch the game but only in a demo mode the news has unsurprisingly gone down very poorly um this was the saddest and most ruthless decision I've ever seen in gaming his uh, history read said one uh redditor i will always fight for digital media i i love all the advantages it gives to users all around the world but this we need protection on the national european level uh, that when we purchase something, we need to have lifetime access to it no matter what. Um, yeah, a further, re a further Reddit user called it really abhorrent behavior that needs to stop being legal. With another writing, in an ideal world, revoking a license like this should entitle the buyer to a refund. I'm not sure why they're even bothering doing this. The game isn't playable anymore, so what exactly is the harm keeping a game available for download for those who have purchased it? Server space, is Ubisoft really that cheap? Yeah, they are. <laughs> we've, proved, we've kind of proven that before. Um, and here's where the article comes back. It's worth noting that it appears you can technically still download the game on Steam, but any attempt to play it is followed up with a request to input a game key. Shit. And here's the, the last paragraph here. Now, it's one thing to just delist the, de delist the game and still allow owners to download and boot it if they want, even if the game is technically dead. But it's another thing to revoke the license to the files entirely. Uh, it came very close to pulling, putting a dent in plans to bring fan servers to the game. But one can project a, one 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 project appears to still be chugging along. All right. Um, we're not going to read the rest of this. There's actually a lot more here. Uh, but, yeah, this is fucking I'm going to say this. Um, yeah, go ahead, man. I'm going to say this about that. Um, when you uh, log into certain games, right, and I'm sure the crew is included, usually most game studios have a bit of rhetoric in there that says, hey, yeah, we can delete this shit. You know, you don't own this stuff to cover their assets. Has anybody in their whole, in any of these, um, in any of this, you know, you know, obviously backlash that's happening right now bothered to look at the user agreement mm, no you know they didn't no yes. you know why because so, nobody reads that shit nobody reads the user agreements well i think you got i think whoever is, is still interested in that game needs to really look at their user agreement and really see and really uh, really look at and see what if they have the right to really complain because i have a feeling they don't yeah and i also suspect Whatever thing is in the agreement for that game is probably in a lot of other games, you know. Yeah, and that's that's how these that's how a lot of these games get away with doing stuff like this because if they have a user agreement, you know, some games actually have like as soon as you start the game up, they have a little bit of a user agreement yep. up in the front end. So has anybody read any of those? Because there might be some really important information in there that you might be missing. Yeah, <laughs> as opposed to whether you actually own your title or you don't. Yeah, but again, really? I said, we read those every time. Yes, every single time. Yeah, we do. We totally read them all. Yeah, because it's like either accept For, it or decline it. They don't play the game. That's literally your two choices. That's pretty much it. Yeah. Yeah, uh, and that's uh, usually after you've already bought the game. So, yep. like, just sit, throw your money in the trash or accept these conditions. I put the, I, I, for the, you know, uh, cause I have the access to the, you know, the, the the timed demos on PlayStation. I know I played a little Alan Wake uh, two on there, and it had one of those things in the beginning too. And I'm like, I, I I took a little moment to read a little bit of it, but I'm like, why do we need a user agreement in front of this game? Isn't yeah. it supposed to be a game that's not? Um, what are we doing, Manny? You, you know, want me to what, want me to click on watch stream or something? What do you mean? Well, I'm not. No, that's that's Drunken Demon. Oh, Brian, that's you want to show something? Okay, that's, that's Brian. Mm -hmm. That's not okay. me. Okay. Well, thank yep. you, Brian. All right. So what's going on here? Yeah. You, you showed us the crew. 
Okay. Oh, look at that. You no longer have access to this game. Why not check the store to pursue your adventures? Holy shit. Yep. Look at that. So uh, it is. Yeah, Brian, what are your thoughts on this? Obviously, you were a fan of the crew, you know? Uh, I'm not overly surprised Ubisoft would pull something like this. But at the same time, I'm just more annoyed at it that that they did this. Okay, I, I, I'm, I'm not annoyed that they can do this. Because again, it's all part of the end user license agreement. And again, as we said, no one reads 30 pages of that. And it's there somewhere. But it's more a case of, I don't... It's just frustrating that they did this because, again, they could have just said, "Okay, you know what? No longer being supported, put out in the wild. People can make custom servers, etc." End of story. We just won't officially support it. But hence, they move it from like a Ubisoft-owned thing to more of a community-owned thing. You know, where the community can support it and play it and whatnot. You know, still have that. But no, they just decided to pull the plug, and then they pull the plug even further by making sure that you can't do that and. That's the thing that's just really annoying about the whole situation. So it's 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 interesting now because it's now now at a point where again this is now one of those games that is in the category of can no longer be played. You know, again going back to um, your guy's book about um, games that can only be played that have been made. This is now one of those. You know, it's, and it's quote unquote recent and it's just. Yeah, that's it. It's done. Nothing can be done. I I don't know what legal challenges can be made from our point of view that can get it back. <laughs> so it's just kind of it's done. It's lost it's lost history. You know, the same thing with Mag. It's just lost history. You know, can't yeah. can't play it. You can't play it, you can't buy it. It's done. It's yeah, it's very sad. But at the same time, I think I think the big issue with all of this is it's not digital that's the problem it's drm that's the problem and yeah. i think once once that the drm problem is fixed quote unquote and that's a massive challenge on so many different fronts then things like this might not be a be a problem but i don't think we'll ever get to a point where drm is fixed because again drm is working as intended for some people just that those some people it's not our, us. Yeah. Rich, what are your thoughts, man? No. All right. So first and foremost, let me just say, I agree with a lot of the points that have been made, but I do want to emphasize, I, I am definitely a bit taken back by this news because literally at the end of last year, I got invited to an event for the crew motor fest. Um, they had a whole bunch of people come out to San Francisco for this event so they can see the upcoming season of content because they are partnering with another company that was also in San Francisco for how they were going to advertise their cars. So while I know that they want everybody to play the Crew Motor Fest now, I think they missed an opportunity to use the original Crew game as a gateway to introduce people to this other game. So to see that they have decided to just shut this down. I think this is going to impact the Crew Motor Fest because clearly when they invited people to come out to this event, it's because they want people talking about this actual content. Uh, so I kind of feel like the people who were mad about what happened with the crew, they may not support this Motor Fest game moving forward. And that's, uh, I just don't know uh, who thought about this, but uh, I would have thought a little bit more about how to handle this situation before I just outright making this decision like this that's a good point because if you're you know looking forward to that new crew game you're going to be thinking wait are they going to take that away from me too in the future it's a valid yes, concern mm -hmm. you know Go i mean ahead. like here's the thing <clears throat> like it's one thing to be like oh well are they going to keep my game up when it's you know not super profitable when there are people a lot of people playing it when they're cost involved things like that but like my my main question is like okay so what happens in say like an, an Overwatch Overwatch Two situation, right? Like what what happens when you have a quasi live service or even not live service? Let's say single player offline video game, right? But they come out with, uh, you know, fuck it, Last of Us. We got the Last of Us. Then they come out with the Last of Us remastered. I know, hard to imagine, but it happens, yeah. right? They come out with the Last of Us remastered. Then they remove the original Last of Us, which 
some of the original lines or whatever. You know, like we we all know like. We, we, we've all seen the damn Disney movies where, you know, it, oh, it's new, oh, it's old, oh, it's new, oh, it's old. Like, it's, my, my, my point is that, like, it will be very easy for companies to then force people into buying certain products and not other older products that they could, you know, charge less money. They can force them to buy the newer premium pro- products by locking them out of the old ones intentionally. Like, we've, we've only seen the bad in them being accidentally bad, but there's a whole new level of them being intention- intentionally and maliciously bad that can open up. So, it's bad, and it can get worse. So, and this might be a stupid question, what if you bought the game physically? Can you still play it, or are you just locked out too? I think, and that's the problem, because the digital sales are driving the market, I think you'll be locked out even as a physical owner. That's what I think too, yeah. Because if the servers are shut yeah, down. Yeah, I suspect that too. Yeah, that's what I, yeah, I think. So even, you know, because, you know, the, 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 the thing people would say in this instance would be like, buy physical. <laughs> it won't yeah, help you it, here either, you know? That, that would work if everybody bought physical, but the market has shifted to yeah. mostly digital. So we can't vote with our wallets in that fashion because it doesn't really matter. Now, the thing I have learned from getting a, a digital only PlayStation is don't do that. Just have the ability to play physical. Have the ability to get stuff like every time I think about it, I want to like oh get back, get a game. I go on the Sony website. It's just like fifty bucks or sixty bucks or seventy bucks. Like it's way more expensive than it should be because they have courted their own digital marketplace. So. You know, don't don't get digital only consoles. Don't, it's a bad idea. Yeah, which is funny you say that because, like, all the companies are not pushing for that. Oh, of course they are. Of course they are because that's in their benefit. Yeah, but yeah, it's like even physical is not going to you know save you at the end of the day. Shit I is mean, crazy. It just depends. It depends on yeah, like just like Brian said, it's the DRM that you need to really worry about. Hey, didn't we have that conversation about like uh, I don't know how long has it been? 15, 20 years now. Yeah, about, something like that. Yeah. You know, you know, where you could trade games, you know, without <laughs> the t- <laughs> Oh that man. Shoei Yoshida. Yeah, that's right. When PlayStation Four was real, two thousand thirteen. I'm pretty sure yeah. that came up on. Um, Ten years ago, in right? the be- beginning of my adult career, like ten, PlayStation Two. Yeah, I mean, the big irony here is we finally got to a place where backwards compatibility is kind of ubiquitous, and now we're getting to a place where they just take it away freely. Like it's, 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 it's. It frustrates me because we we are we were so close to just being able to like play last generation's games on this thing too, but now they can take down last generation's games and only sell you the new version. Like we thought we had them tricked, we thought we had a workaround. Then they changed the whole system. Like it's just there's a, there's a sad irony there. I don't really know what the point of point of that out is, other than like I noticed it, so now you have to notice it too. Yeah, well, I mean, we've seen some of that stuff happening on Steam. Like, for example, they'll release like an updated version of a game, and then they'll get rid of the old version, like the old Final Fantasies that they had, which were bad. Don't get me wrong, they were bad. Like, they had mobile versions of Final Fantasy. Those got replaced with the Pixel remasters. But what if you wanted those old games? Like, but, but they, I think with Steam, if you download them, you're, you're, you're still good. Um, but regardless, it, it goes to show you that there's not really any permanence when it comes to the digital stuff, you know? Just how it is, man. All right, um, let's move on here. Um, Ghost of Tsushima people. Coming to PC, official. But well, the real reason I want to talk about this is because uh, they're doing something I've been asking for for a while. Um, PlayStation trophies on PC games. It's happening. Um, and I believe it looks like the. Go ahead, Manny. Uh, cross save too. Cross save, yep. Um, and what is this, Manny? A, uni- a new UI, which is pretty cool. Um, all right, let me read this real quick. PlayStation. 
Uh, Ghost of Shima directors got to come in to PC on May 16th. Made it day after your birthday. Um, yo, man, they're doing it. Yo, man, they're putting that ghost out for my birthday. Yo, what's up with that? What's up with that? And I can't play it on my old my old ass PC. What's up? With that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, all right. So let's get to this part. As we've previously announced, Ghost of Tsushima Director's Cut on PC contains the full game, the Iki Island expansion, and a cooperative multiplayer Legends mode. Thanks to crossplay support, Legends players on Windows PCs can team up with players on both PS4 and PS5s and use in-game voice chat to communicate. Uh, you will be required to sign in your PlayStation Network account to access it. Makes sense. Um, that's kind of cool. They're still supporting that. Uh, Ghost of Tsushima Director's Cut is the first PlayStation title on PC that uses a new PlayStation overlay, which includes your friends list, trophies, settings, and your profile. This feature is available on Windows PCs and will be accessible from the in-game menu or for keyboard players by pressing Shift plus F1 on their keyboard. Cool. Okay, so... Yeah, because I was interesting. Wondering. Yeah, very interesting. Kind of like, kind of like the Xbox menu that shows up on PC if you're playing a, yeah. a Xbox game. Same sort of deal. Um, okay, while playing the game on PC, go, go, go ahead. Just quietly took a very big step forward to integrating with PC. Yeah, no, you're you're right. Um, continue on here to prove your point, Brett. Uh, while playing the game, you can earn PlayStation trophies. Just like on PlayStation consoles. Ghost of Tsushima Director's Cut on PC shares the same trophy set as the game on PS5. In addition, the PC version also has full support for achievements on Steam and the Epic Game Store. Oh shit, you get like three fucking achievement sets, basically. That's wild, man. Um, to make use of features like trophies, friends lists, and crossplay, you need to you can sign in your existing PlayStation account. Okay, we figure that. You, the use of PlayStation overlay is optional for both the single player experience and Legends mode. Cool. Um, some stuff here. Anyway, Brett, w- w- what's your take on this, man? Will this thing be retroactive on all the other PlayStation things? What do you mean? Way? What do you mean? So, like, uh, the you know, Spider-Man re-releases. and all those other games have been released. Well, I mean, that's, on, what, on that's what the uh, re-releases are for. <laughs> Wait, Manny, hold on. I, I, I don't, re-releasing. I, I, can you say that again? I don't think I understood your question. I'm saying, will this be retroactive to all the previous oh, no, no, games? Man, that we'll, we'll go back, go back, games. go back. What, what is this? What is this? You said it's just going to be attractive. This overlay what? thing. Okay. This overlay oh, who thing knows? The trophies and the overlay all and stuff. trophies. Okay, well, I have. Well, you yeah, like because trophies on Spider Man. It's yeah. nice. It's nice. It's you know, it's nice and all to be able to do with Ghost of Tsushima, but they should go down the line and uh, and, yeah. and act this on all of their their previously released titles. Yeah, I can't say I can't speak to that. I, mean, I could only speak for whatever's in this game, you know. Um, I well, do I agree with you? That would be nice. I've been asking for that for years, you know. Uh, but I can't answer that because I don't know. Um, and we got some uh, system specs here, recommendations. Let me look. Um, hmm, I, mean, I always go very high. You know me, man. Um, okay, we well, need a full RTX forty. At minimum, if you want to play on high. Oh, no? Uh, RTX 40 graphics card. That's not, not bad. Yeah, uh, Intel Core i5, uh, 11th gen. That's not too bad. Eh, even on high, these are pretty good specs. That, or the recommend, you know, like, recommended. Well, um, we're on a last yeah, console. Bad. That thing was a fucking potato. Yeah, exactly, yeah. It's, you're not going to struggle, <laughs> you know. Um, good stuff. Uh, May 16th. Um do they say the the file size? I don't know if they do or not. Uh, but I, yeah. But anyway, I'm really happy about the trophy thing. And like you said, maybe I hope hopefully it'll come to other games. You know. Mm, yeah. No, I think it's coming to all future ones, and they'll re-release yeah. the old ones. Like this is, this is a big deal. In any other scenario, this would be widely advertised. I feel like like this would be like the key mark of a new integration new air integration for playstation but playstation is doing that shit quietly i don't know the thing. anybody else picking that up yeah because they probably don't want to like, upset their, their fan base like, yeah, I mean, yeah. we're just doing it we're integrating we're doing pc stuff yeah you know no biggie yeah why do you think that is i think it's because they don't want to upset their existing players exactly they don't want to upset their fan base so. they know it looks good they know it's a direction they want to move in the future but they know it would very much upset their fan base, so they're just kind of like, check out a cool couple cool features. Don't think about what they mean. And that, that, implications? Yeah. What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, right. 
that's something Sony does in general. Like, remember the, the, how they were boasting about how PlayStation Online is always free? And then they snuck it in, the price, you know, without directly saying it. It's like, oh, look what you guys did. I see what you did there, you know. Um, but, yeah, you know, pretty cool stuff. Um, and we'll see what the game looks like on PC. People have been asking for this one forever, like three and a half years now, you know. So we shall see. Um, by the way, real quick, Bob hits like, yo, Tony, are you, are you not going to stop uh, playing PlayStation games uh, and just get them on PC? I'm like, I don't want to wait four years between titles, bro. <laughs> you know, fuck that shit. Um, but it's good that they're doing that. I mean, oh, when it, w- whenever, ahead. if the time ever comes when it's day and day, date, day and date, I'm ditching that fucking PlayStation. Yep. Same here. Same here. But uh, unless it's day and date, then uh, nah, I'm good. All right, they know that. Yeah, exactly. That and this is why they're you know staggering shit. Um, does anybody else have any other thoughts on this? I just think it's pretty cool that they've done this, and in my opinion, they've done this possibly the best way that they could, because they quite they could have easily just went and made their own platform where that's where you buy games, so like a PlayStation Store on PC per se as a launcher. And then they say, okay, that's how, that's not how you do it. But they didn't do that, you know. They said, okay, let's just allow you to sign in in our games, and there you go. It's like, oh, that's that's that is good. That makes sense, you know. Um, however, I do have a slight concern, which again, it is unfounded, but it's a concern and kind of loops back to what we talked about. Is I I I can see them using this as. A form of DRM to some extent, and I don't know how this will play out with um, GOG because GOG is very anti DRM in that you can just download a game and literally copy and paste it to another d- device and it's fine. So I don't know how this will play with that um, because most games end up being on GOG at this point. Uh, I do believe there's like a few games that aren't on GOG yet. But Horizon um, Zero Dawn is on there. God of War, I think, is on there. Days Gone is on there. So I don't know how this would play out with GOG if the if it is acting as some sort of sort of DRM, which again is unfounded, but it's a concern because again, it's always I'm always concerned when people try to sneak in DRM to some degree um, without us knowing. But I guess we'll just wait and see. Yeah. All right, man, good stuff. Uh, Move on here. More controversy. Um, Obviously, you know, people have been very upset with Star Wars Outlaws, and here's another reason. Uh, Apparently, they're they're locking the Jabba the Hutt mission behind a season pass, which is supposed to be a a substantial mission. People are not happy about that. You know, among other things, um, it's, it's, it's interesting to me like companies are still doing this stuff 2024, you know? Um, but this is also Ubisoft we're talking about. And now that Adam isn't on the show, he, you know, he's not going to defend him. <laughs> so, so we'll dunk on Ubisoft, you know? Um, yeah, because it's like, yeah, you can get the game for like $70, but there's a lot of other, like if you get the, the season pass or whatever, you get like two full expansions you know, for $130 and all that. And one of these is a, a Jabba thing, which is, a, you know, something people actually want to play. You know, it's Jabba the Hut, like basically get to like kind of run around with his like like gang and stuff, you know. Um, but yeah, man, I don't know about this game, bro. When it <laughs> drops, go ahead. What are your thoughts on this? Uh, I just will make a quick comment. Uh, I know that Adam is not here to defend Ubisoft, but uh, I will. Uh, but but we can say this: our very good friend, Mister Carlos Romero, did say he's picking up this game. <laughs> So he can tell us how the game is when it drops later this year. <laughs> I guess so. There you go. Inside scoop. The, quote, the, quote, the famous philosopher, Richard Bailey Jr. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Is anyone on the panel even excited about this? I'm not sure. I'm not. I mean, just for the plain fact, I'm, I'm just, just not, I'm just not interested in Star Wars in general. So. It's just it's just dead air. I feel like this would have been a lot more 
if the, if if, if uh, they had something that was going on, you know, that was that was exciting, you know, for the Star Wars franchise, but they they're literally constantly shooting themselves in the foot with their with their stuff. Star Wars bring needs back to Star break. Kill, you fucking cowards. Okay. Mm-hmm. Star, st- yeah, you bring, bring back thirteen, yeah, thirteen. You can bring oh, back thirteen, right. thirteen, or yeah. Well, this looks like a half-ass version of thirteen, thirteen. To be honest, when don't yeah. don't we also have the the Old Republic remake uh, that's supposed to? I thought that was canceled. canceled. That thought was canceled. Oh. Yeah. Oh. So yeah, I think that's done. Yeah. Uh-huh. Huh. Well, the the only real excitement that I would say people have is that. After this game gets released, the studio working on this game is going to start working on the Division Three. So that shit, I'm pretty sure people they want to play that. They want to see what that's all about. But uh, I don't know anybody else looking forward to this. Uh, that, that's a good question. I have no idea. <laughs> if it's not in New York, it's not that division. Is that the division? <laughs> <laughs> if it's not in New York, I'm rage quitting. <laughs> oh man! By the way, <laughs> quick um, like I, I guess like um, correction from last because we talked about this game on the last week's show, um, and someone pointed out that because one one of our complaints was that they showed this trailer and we're like, where the fuck's the gameplay? Apparently, they showed like a ten minute gameplay trailer like months beforehand. But it, this goes to show you how our interest in this game that we didn't even know that <laughs> you know. Apparently, well, they. they should- yeah, go ahead. We're talking about the we're talking about the trailer. Yeah, and then that didn't show game a gameplay. So it's like, why, why are we hyped about the trailer? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but he just you know the, the, he pointed out like, hey, you guys, uh, you guys didn't mention the fact that that there was a gameplay I, demo. I, I remember the gameplay demo. Yeah, that was came out beforehand. But yeah, yeah. Well, before you know during the yeah. show, we were like, why didn't they have a gameplay demo? None of us could figure out what kind of game it was. So. Obviously, we didn't watch the trailer. No, I know? mean, I th- I could have sworn I mentioned that there was a gameplay demo that was released before this thing. Yeah, but you know, you know, you don't know, yeah. you don't think about the thing about the here and now is that you know, they get like, like that whatever that was what was before. You know, they showed a little bit of stuff, and okay, you got it, but now it's like here we go again. So, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, Brett, what's up, man? This is Santa fucking uh, accountability cast. I fucking love it. Yeah, exactly. You know, listen, shout out to the fans. They hold us accountable. Like the guy, you know, very respectful. He's been one of our longtime listeners. He said, I love that last week's episode, but I, he's like, I, I just cringe a little when you guys were talking about that uh, Star Wars because you didn't bring up the fact that there was a 10 minute demo. Um, but, you know, he was cool about it. Um, but he, yeah, regardless, you, man. yeah, definitely. Again, hold us accountable. We're not these other fucking gaming uh, sites or, or podcasts where, you know, if you correct us, we're going to just like shit on you. We're going to thank you. Yeah, I mean, try not to be a dick about it. But, yeah, I know. He was definitely not a dick, which I appreciated. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. That's why I was like, cool, man. Like, with no beef. Like, constructive uh, accountability. Always a good thing around here. Yeah, man, and I just yeah, fucking, man. I love that we have that culture for our podcast and our fans. It's, just, it's dope. Yep, we 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 got a we got accountability buddies. Uh, yeah, exactly, accountability buddies. <laughs> yeah. All right, find your accountability buddy. <laughs> yeah. Oh, by the way, real quick, uh, not not meaning meaning to derail the show, but I want to read something on air. Um, uh oh, Manny, this is for you. Uh oh. Uh oh, Mister J Shep. He goes, no, um, he goes, I don't even know what to say. I'm just blown away right now. This is probably the most awesome gift I've gotten in a very long time. I don't even feel like telling Manny. Thank you is enough. Please tell him I'm grateful as fuck, man. And thank you. So there you go. You're welcome, man. You're welcome. You're welcome. Yeah. So if yeah. So for you guys who don't know, Manny not only sent. Jay Shep like a sign was it a signed DVD case or something of the Ninja Turtles? Yeah, it was the uh, it was the turtle uh, the Ninja Turtles uh, uh, Ultimate Collection uh, DVD uh, cover. Um, you know, it was just the paper. Um, he had sent that, and he also you know by the way you know big thanks to Mister Shep. Because yeah, we got to give away these games it. eventually. We are uh, we have we got we are swimming in a bunch of games over here because uh, my boy you know he hooked us up. So yeah, I we think we're gonna do some for episode five hundred for those for sure. But yeah, you, was, yeah, you know yeah. we got yeah. So but yeah. So um, that said, uh, yeah, I you know I just you know I've obviously I've, I've had you know a couple of things going on work and you know obviously in the passing of my my little kitty cat so it was so really sorry about the the how late that that took but 
I figured I'd throw in a couple of things in there. So I, you know, I threw in a, a signed copy of Excellence, the the special, um, what do they call it? Uh, the Kickstarter version of Excellence, which is the collection of the whole series in a nice, you know, really nice hardcover. Um, I also put in the 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 uh, a special Skybound uh, Sky, Skybound X number four, which is which I drew uh, some stuff for Excellence inside of. It. Me and Kari are both tag teaming on that one. And I can't remember what else in there. I put, I put a couple of comics in there. So, yeah. There Good go. stuff. Um, all right, man. Um, we don't need to talk about Star Wars anyway. I don't I don't care about that game. Um, but what's what's a Star Wars? Let's let's talk about Star this? Trek. Who cares about Star Wars? Man? Hey, I, I, I will say I will say this. I mean, I know we're all negative about it, but I hope it turns out good. Yeah, we'll and see. It, you know, I, yeah. I mean, yeah, like, hopefully it, it, it turns out good. I mean, it's like, I, I saw a couple of people wa- that were sort of, like, you know, happy that it wasn't about a Jedi person, you know, because every single Star Wars game has to have a Jedi. Hopefully she doesn't all of a sudden to have, the, somehow magically have, a, or ha- have access <laughs> to the Force, you know. Like like the Broom Kid? <laughs> like Broom yeah. Kid. Or, I, I have a feeling she probably will by uh, the end, you know. Go ahead, Rich. The stupid, st- uh, 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 yep. uh, a deep faked Mark Hamill shows up and says, "Hey, you got the force. Hi, how's it going? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, have you met my buddy Chewbacca and Princess Leia and uh, Han Solo? And oh, by the way, we resurrected Dash, Dash Render. Oh no, he's dead. Okay. <laughs> uh, Rich, what's up, man? Uh, I just go make a comment uh, to go to Carlos's point. Yeah, hopefully the game is uh, is actually good. I just was going to say uh, we may be able to talk about that in the future. So Uh-oh. stay tuned. Stay tuned for oh, that. Oh, shit. Inside scoop. Rich PT. Yeah. <laughs> Funny thing, Manny, is I actually was about to say the, the exact same thing. That on the one hand, I am very happy that we finally get, get a Star Wars game where you don't play as a Jedi because I'm just getting sick and tired of it. Because there's so many other cool things you can do in the universe. It's not just dead eye, you know. It's like, okay, there's other things you can do, you know. So do that. This is why 1313 got such excitement. Because it wasn't a Jedi, you know. We have good Jedi games. So, yeah, it's cool. But as you guys said, (laughs) if that does happen, then I'm going to be very disappointed. And I'm watching some of the gameplay. And there's a section where she's just driving her land speeder, I guess, and she's just going through the environment. And my first thought is, if there's nothing to do in that environment, then what's the point? Yeah. <laughs> so it's kind of like, ooh, that's... Again, it could just be for the sake of just showing you the landscape and, okay, this is how things look and how things work, so fine, whatever. But again, I'm on the side with Tony here. I, I'm kind of just meh. I guess if we ever see the Killmonger haircut in in this game, then we'll know that it's bad. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. Let's go, man. All right. Um, moving on here, we got to talk about the PS5 Pro again because that's a thing. Um, and it seems like it actually will be a thing. I, I think at this point we could probably say it will be. Um, so this is from uh, The Verge, Mr. Tom really? Henderson, doing the, the the Lord's work as always. Uh, code name. I'm, I'm going to read this. Uh, code name Trinity. The PS5 Pro model will will include a more powerful GPU, a slightly faster uh, CPU, as we've discussed. Um, all of Sony's changes point to a PS5 Pro that will be far more capable of rendering games with ray tracing enabled or hitting higher resolutions and frame rates in certain titles. Sony appears to be encouraging developers to use graphics features like ray tracing more with the PS5 Pro, with games able to use a quote trinity enhance or ps5 pro enhance label if they provide significant uh enhancements we we broke down all that shit um but but the key thing here is like basically sony is like encouraging developers like start using that 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 way tracing you know um and apparently they wanted to they want to get the games ready for the summer because you know the reports kind of say that this is probably going to be out you know, at the either at the end of summer or beginning of fall, kind of like the PS4 Pro. You know, um, that that kind of anniversary yeah. point. Go ahead, Carlos. Yeah. Play, PlayStation Five Trinity. I wonder. Remember when Xbox did the Scorpio? 
Yeah, and all those and all, and all those expats put the Scorpio tag in their in their game oh, in no. their uh, Twitter handles. Yeah, man, yo, man, these you, these ponies gonna put a, gonna put crosses on their things. Are they gonna? Uh, uh, no, they're gonna put up a uh, carry on. That's what I thought. Yeah, I'd look carry on. Carry on <laughs> That's what I thought. Yeah, no, I, I didn't even get the cross <laughs> reference. <laughs> um, oh, you mean like G- Jesus cross? Okay, not not. Yeah, this shows you I'm not a fucking Christian. (laughs) This shows you I'm not a fucking Christian. I'm like, oh, oh, like, oh yeah. Had to do the math in my head. Yo, by the way, no, they're gonna put a put a put up a Guadalupe there. Guadalupe, there you go. By the way, just as an aside, um, you know, when I was in the office the other day, somebody made some joke about religion, like, oh, you got to pray for this, and I'm like, yo, I don't even know how to do that. I'm just like, you know, like I don't know. It's like I don't know how to do that shit. Um, anyway, I don't know. Prayers are like asking for things. Yeah, no, the, yeah, but, the, but like, <laughs> the, but there's like, like he, the, one of them said like a rhyme to remind you of where to, you know, because you had to do that, you know, this shit, like, you know, uh, the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Yeah, like I, I don't know how to do this. Like, do you point get, get your nuts too? Like, I, I don't know, man. Um, not a it's Christian, a ritual, like I said. yo. Yeah, um, it's a ritual. Okay, okay. So all this stuff we already talked about the forty five percent faster, which we not really forty five percent faster, you know. Um, but yeah, it, it is interesting that they're trying to push these things because that's one of the things that uh, Digital Foundry found, like discovered when they did a technical breakdown of the Stellar Blade demo. It's like, oh, there's no ray tracing, no matter what, you know, um, no matter how high you put the graphics, because you know, like obviously, like a lot of games that have three graphics modes, and if you put it on 4K mode, it's just 4K, no graphical enhancements. Um, so I'm curious to see if that game will eventually get something. You know, especially if it hits as big I as think, I suspect. I feel like though, I think I think performance and looking good as is is what their main yeah. focus was. You know what I mean? I don't. I feel like other than like the game already looks pretty decent. It's running on a real, so it's like Unreal Four. So I think they're they're sticking with what they know. At yeah. some point, when you when you when you're when you're developing a game, you know, there's something called feature creep, right? And when you're you, you can't constantly keep cha- if you've already started on an engine or iteration you can't constantly keep cha- uh, chasing the next engine up or the next all the next features up because then you don't get your game done so every single company who is making a game makes that cutoff point and say okay boom this is the one we're using and we're not changing anything except if you're 3D realms and Duke Nukem forever yeah, the Lusher 3D realms was, was exactly do, did exactly what I was talking about. <laughs> where they literally saw a new engine out and they kept remaking their game. Yeah. Um, real quick, Barry Byrne, can you take out the trash, please? The fucking bots, man. Uh oh. Um, all right. Anyway, we don't need to read the rest. We 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 went into at length about this in our previous episode. Um, pretty interesting stuff, but it seems like yeah, this thing's coming. You know. Um, get ready. I do have a question, What's which up? is so what names are left for them to use? Because they're using quite again, they, they've used know. Morpheus, they use Trinity. Did they use uh Neo? Well, I don't know. I am trying to find it, but Project I have not Neo? found anything. Like, what's that? I mean, they still got a bunch of other names, right? Cypher, <laughs> you know. Whatever fucking Jada <laughs> Smith, Smith's name character was, so he still got a bunch of names. No, uh, the no, Oracle, uh, you know. Um, no, she Oracle. was um, the you know Merovingian. Merovingian, but you don't want to do the bad guys because then you don't want to use those. Yeah, right? that's funny. Like the most memorable though, they are. Yeah, I mean Agent Smith. Agent Smith, yeah. <laughs> you might think of co- code name Agent Smith. That, that, that doesn't sound <laughs> <laughs> Project Smith. Yeah, but we you know we'll, we'll 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 worry about that when we need to worry about that, I guess. Um, all right, so this one's interesting. By the way, people, um, you guys asked uh, Brett for his thoughts on Fallout uh, TV show, but it hasn't come out. Yet. He hasn't seen it yet, so we'll wait for the Sunday show. But Brett, I still ha- I still stuck the story here just because I thought you had seen it, but you'll find this interesting regardless. Uh, apparently, uh, Fallout Four. Sales over in the you know European Union have risen by seven thousand five hundred percent after the show dropped. Yeah, no, I actually I actually saw that, and that was one of the things that uh, that 
it's very coincidental because earlier today I was like, okay, I think I'm really going to watch that because I, I, I did not like some of the things that they came out with. Um, Wheel of Time, look at you. Mm-hmm. So uh, I was very hesitant about this, Rings and then of power. I started seeing some videos that was talking about that was talking about how oh, it seemed to be pretty good. And then I saw the, those sales numbers, and I was like, okay, so here's the deal: the way I take that, um, if the show is good enough to spark interest in, or more likely, it seems, um, remind people of the games, then that is a great sign for, you know, having kind of grabbed the general vibe of, of the games, which is, you know, what I've heard. So the, those sales numbers, like, in a way, support that the show feels authentic and fallout E. So I'm really excited for it. I'm going to, I'm going to, um, you know, just for you guys. Not I wasn't going to do it anyway, but just for you guys, I'm going to sit down and binge the whole thing. So I have uh, nice thoughts next week for you, or uh, Sunday, or whatever. Remember what happened with um, Edge Runners? Yep, same this deal, is the same effect, same effect. Yeah, yeah. successful streaming see, show see, for sales. Yeah, see, you see, you see, you see what happens when a company, you know, or people doing adaptation of something really pays attention to the world that they're sort of you know setting their thing in you know yeah. instead of instead of instead of throwing things to the wayside like a certain show with a white haired character oh man you know, to, to the wayside that's a good one well i mean I'll, also from what i understood about the fallout show it, it doesn't it's it's not really it's not trying to uh preach anything at you. It, does, no. it doesn't have an overarching moral story it's a, it's a dark comedy the same way the game is in that the in, in the sense that and because of that it does it doesn't really have a a, a preachy morale you know uh, tie everything up with a bow kind of thing and I I like that and I think in today's day and age you know we we need more of that it it, it feels and sounds genuine so I'm actually pretty stoked about it I'm not expecting everything but you know as far as an adaptation it seems like it's it's got uh, a lot of the right stuff. I got I got a couple of things. Brett, oh. you said don't expect don't expect everything. Uh, well, don't 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 watch Adam's uh, Twitter feed because <laughs> you, you, you'll expect everything. Oh yeah, Cause... Brett, you missed it. So Adam, I, I got to pull up this tweet, man, because uh, some people. Oh, were... While you do that, yeah. while you do that, right. yeah, please, I got yeah, to look it up so I got full vamp, please. Number three, I'm pretty sure Brian was going to chime in with this. Number three, Steam sales right now, Fallout seventy six. Number five, Fallout 4. Number nine, Fallout 4 Game of the Year Edition. And number 12, Fallout New Vegas. And number 13, oh. Fallout Franchise Bundle. So <laughs> this thing is selling, man. And, and, hold, on. Hold, on. hold on. And real quick before wait, anything, wait, wait. Brian, Brian, can you guess what number four is? <laughs> GTA? Yes. <laughs> yes, oh, GTA 5. I'm talking with GTA for everything. Yep, it's yep. Like, GTA. Go ahead. Uh, is Brett. Fallout 76 selling the most of the Fallouts? Uh, no. Yes. It's, wait, Fallout 4 selling the most right now, Carlos. On 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 Steam, I think, but maybe overall, probably. Okay. Yeah, because on this list again, one. the European Union. Um, so number one is Fallout 4. Number eight is Fallout 76. Number nine is Fallout New Vegas, and number ten is Fallout 3. That's crazy. Four old ass games. Well, not 76, but all these games that are not new just suddenly on there. Very interesting. So so Brett, I want your take on this. This is from Adam, right? And you know Adam, he doesn't he's he's not a liar. You know, because people were like, oh, is he lying? Is he just capping? No, this is Adam. This is real. They thought it was many jokes. Like, is this AI generated? <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> it's hilarious. It's hilarious because he doesn't. Ch- he hasn't chimed in like much in you know in a while. Adam doesn't tweet that one. He yeah. totally chimed in on that one. So check this out, uh, uh, Brett. So Adam, you know he quote he added Amazon Studios and Bethesda and said, "I just finished watching Fallout and have to say it's the best damn show I've seen in years, and I feel blessed to have lived in a time to see its creation." Wow! Wow! <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Yeah, so if you're expecting the world, then just read Adam's Twitter timeline. <laughs> yeah. but, uh, this, better be, this better be the Elden Ring of TV shows. <laughs> 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 oh, man. So um, needless to say, Adam really likes it, you know? 
<laughs> All right. I mean, that's, that's, I, you know, to, to see, I, I'm really hard to see as many Fallout fans um, excited about it. And my, my only concern is like, and I'm not, and not in a gatekeeping way, but I'm like, oh, I don't know if the people that are really enjoying it are like casual Fallout fans or some of the more hardcore Fallout fans like the Lore Keepers. Because if you impress the Lore Keepers to the point where we're evangelizing on the internet, that is, that is really, really impressive. Like almost unheard of. You, you don't impress the evangelists. You never do. Yeah. Um, well, that's kind of the interesting divide I've seen. Like guys like Adam, I don't want to call him a normie, but he does lean that way. He, people like him really like it, but the lore keepers are like, what the fuck is this shit? You know? Um, okay. Actually, actually the, 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 they're very upset about new Vegas. How apparently they've erased it from the timeline. Well, actually, actually it doesn't. There's, there was actually, there's actually something in there. No, it's not deleted from there. Yeah. They've actually, it's fine. Well, no, yeah. but remember, that's what they said. You know, that. so I don't know if there's, you know, like maybe they found that's out against it, the, but, the, but there was like No, the, that's what the, they didn't, they didn't say that. The, the, the official. No, 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 no. I'm saying it. that's what fans were really mad about over the weekend, for example. Well, yeah, but they, but they, but people looked into it and they're like, no, it doesn't erase anything. Yeah. So there was a false alarm. Okay, that's good to know then, because those guys, you know, I, saw, I saw videos everywhere. Oh, they're they're racing, and even on this podcast, we speculated that it was like, oh, because Todd Howard didn't make the game, so he wanted to get race. He didn't make the game. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the, I think in general, I think in general, like you know, one thing about like the way it, the the way that world works is it's a play. It's it has all the things all set up. And I think, you know, set up, you know, for the for a creator to essentially play in that universe. So you could literally you could, you know, they have a set amount of vaults that they have in that world. Right. You know, how many how who's to say that this one didn't exist and now it can. Yeah. So. But there you but go. I, I think the one thing that people were saying about the lore is like they wish that it went deeper into the lore and all that sort of stuff. But the thing about it, it's a TV show. You know, like not even Star Wars goes that far into the lore. They they go to the main stuff, right? But they don't tell you about everything else. Everything else that's going on in their universe, right? Mm-hmm. So yeah. But there you go. Um, any thoughts on this uh, resurgence of Fallout games after the TV show? Well, it's, uh, it's good. It's good. The games are good. So you know, make another Fallout. Saw- don't make another Starfield. Okay. Oh, dude. oh, by the way, uh, Adam, also speaking of Adam, he's been playing the Fallout, Fallout 3 Game of the Year edition nonstop on Steam. Really? Listen. Yep, so it's got him hooked. He's back in it, man. I'm bad with just when I thought I was out. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I think it's pretty cool. Um, yeah. I've just been looking at the Steam charts uh, steam charts okay and hmm. for like the last couple of years it's it hovers around the 15,000 mark per, as like monthly average monthly average players um in the last 30 days it's jumped up to 25,000 average players so it's it's a massive jump and like right now it's eating at like a recent peak peak players of 100 over 100,000 players that's Fallout 4 alone on Steam. And like that's that's great. That's fantastic. And mm-hmm. just just because I was here, I decided to look at the other game to see how great that's doing. Um it's sitting at around about two hundred and sixty nine players. Oh shit. <laughs> oh um what's it uh Wait, which game is this? I guess. Uh, is it the All Stars uh, game? No, 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 no. It's it is the other one. For spoken? No, the one that came out in January or February. Oh yeah, the the suicidal game. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh Just man, that's hilarious. That game's fucking dead. Like I said, man, if Rocksteady Studios tanks. Um, I wouldn't be surprised. You know, happened to Volition, right? And it happened to um, Luminous Studios. So there you go. All right, man. Uh, moving on here. Last story of the night. This one's funny, man. So currently, 
Microsoft has more bestsellers on PlayStation Store than Sony does. Ain't that <laughs> something? <laughs> so let's break this down, man. So right now, what are these Microsoft owned games that are on PlayStation? Call of Duty, obviously, number two. Uh, Overwatch, number seven. Sea of Thieves, number 12. Fallout 4, it's back up there, people. Number 16, Minecraft uh, and Fallout 76, 19 and 20, respectively. And 23, Grounded. Um, now, let's look for the PlayStation games. Um, sure, they're here somewhere. Here we go. MLB The Show, number four. Helldivers, number six. Destiny 2, number 14. Yes, that is a Sony game. Stellar Blade. Uh, remember, you know, these are games being bought. Um not played and then uh rise of the ronin so yeah more microsoft games being bought on playstation than actual playstation games ain't that crazy you know ain't that something although i do find it go ahead brett i know you have something to say about this it's it's, it's not enough to like break the myth of microsoft not having any games but it's it's a bit of a start yeah Although online, man, because I posted about this, most of the replies were, <laughs> they don't care because they bought those studios. Like, but they're Microsoft owned games. The the article literally says Microsoft owned games. So, well, I, I, I think both sides, are, honestly, like, I, I, I think some people make good points without necessarily knowing they're making good Like, and I, I agree that Microsoft owned and Microsoft developed games. Are two different, different things. things. Yeah. But, you know, we're, and we're not saying Microsoft developed games. And that's why I say, like, they're not there yet, but this is a good, it's kind of a good start, I guess. Not a good start because, like, buying a bunch of studios isn't, isn't really a show of any, you know, talent or anything like that. It's, it's, a, it's a good direction. It's a good, um, it's a good look for Microsoft. Mm -hmm specifically from microsoft not necessarily the industry not anybody else just microsoft yeah so yeah i mean i think that's probably the best way of looking at it. it's like hey you know microsoft is putting um it's not, well they're not doing because those games would have been there regardless uh, but still you know they are using that power you know now they're they have playstation's audience effectively if you think about it you know but yeah, I saw this going around. Very interesting. It obviously got a lot of people very upset. It's like I Yeah, don't know. it's like when you went technicality, it's it's just it's weird and unsatisfying. Microsoft, you still gotta come out with what what did we say? Like you still have three big games, three three heavy hitters. Yeah. Before I, you can you can start to think about uh, building your brand back. And we gotta see in this generation too. Like you gotta you gotta build the set out three heavy hitters this generation. So that you can launch next generation on a more even footing. If you don't do that, then the divide is. I mean, the divide's not going to close. Period. But if you if you don't put out several Microsoft developed games um, in a show of a good brand, then your your next generation launch is not going to be as good as you want it to be. You know what's funny, Brett? On the Sunday show, I pretty much said almost exactly what you just said and people were like oh man i wish brett was on this episode to defend microsoft he just said what i just said on the sunday show people i literally yeah, said I mean, that too you know it's like yeah. yes like microsoft needs to have good games at the end of the day you know yeah i mean well it's the microsoft tax it's it's they've, yeah. they've got an uphill battle because they didn't deliver for a while like it's it, this this is what happens and this is a weird thing that I don't think that the industry or shareholders or developers, like nobody seems to talk about it, is, is how uh, these things are are cycles of goodwill that, that feed on themselves. or And like it can make or break franchises and make and break studios. It's a big deal. Yeah, I agree. Um, and, and that's something, you know, you changed my mind on too, because when I initially heard, you know, about the Xbox tax, I dismissed it. Like, that's fucking stupid. There's no such thing as that. Then you explain it. It's like, oh, wait, there is an Xbox tax. Deserved Xbox tax, mind you. You know? It's like, yeah, they kind of brought this on yeah. themselves for over 10 years of not really doing anything, you know? Um, not that That's facetious, but yeah. you know what I mean? They haven't done anything to really shake things up game-wise, you know? 
No, I like to really put things in perspective. Like, I mean, we're, we're giving our to, to, to people that like I would be here to defend Microsoft. Like I am, and I I love Microsoft. I love my Xbox. I've saved so much fucking money. I have paid for my Xbox twice over easily in just money I haven't spent. It's uh, it's lowered the bar to entry. Changed the way I play video games. I honestly can't say enough good about it. It has been uh, a high watermark lay, and just by by the small thing of removing that that bar to entry, it's it's got me playing more video games and has ranked it higher in my consoles than than I you know on a lot of gaming consoles. So um, I, I absolutely do love it. Um, but that being said, Tony and I had, had, had talks like we we both kind of agree that like they they don't. And have a lot, and they've they've spoiled um, a lot of people's opinions by mm-hmm. consistently under delivering, and that's not the kind of thing that just goes away, right? Like you you really have to knock people's socks off. You have to show them and force them to think differently, because otherwise they're just going to go with you know what they've already concluded. And that's that's how people are. So. Um, Microsoft, you still you still gotta push it. Owning these things isn't enough. And now it's something. It's gonna it's gonna make people consider you when buying a system now. Like and and you know it's it, people are gonna consider you as playing in the game. Um, so congratulations on that. But that doesn't mean they're gonna consider you playing well in the game. So I'm I'm very inter- interested to see what they had. They. I mean, honestly, they they dropped the ball with Starfield. I think Buried in There personally is is a good game. Um, I also tend to love those kinds of like epic exploratory games. But even then, it I think it's the weakest of all the Bethesda games. And despite what I think about it, you know, it's not like Fallout seventy six where I'm like, y'all are just straight up wrong about this game. Um, this one, nah, not 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 so much. It's it's weak in a lot of aspects. Um, so having that as the the you know that that was not really the the tentpole game that I think that they were hoping for. So at this point, Bethesda, you have to go back and either hit Fallout or Elder Scrolls. Like one of these two has to be done, and it has to be done right. And you better get that shit out soon. You do not have five years to be like, oh, here's the next Elder Scrolls. No, next Elder Scrolls needs to be here in fucking, I don't know, two years, developed by Microsoft, functioning, and awesome. Just do it well. Aren't um, they? And that'll still yeah. only be one. I, I think they're now really going to full production with the game now that Starfield's out. That's what I, I think I read. Yeah, that's. Uh, I mean, my hope is that when they do these things, they generally do a lot of asset and engine building that lets them work, you know, take it into other projects. So I'm, I'm hoping that that's the case. And I understand that games have long development time and that you can't parse up your studios. But Bethesda, you can't, you can't keep doing this. You can't, I can't wait 10 plus years between Fallout games. I mean, I'll still buy them, but somebody's going to come out and in and start delivering where you're not. Mm-hmm. Somebody's going to pow world your Pokemon. Yeah. Now you're right. So Microsoft, man, got to start releasing games again. You have all these studios where the game's at. That's it. It's like you you could have all these talks all day, every day about what strategies can Microsoft do? What can they do? What can they do? And do release games. That's it. That's all people want. You know, all right. Um, by the way, speaking about um, Bethesda, I see this on a timeline right now on Twitter. Um, Fallout has been renewed for season two. No surprise there. Although as Manny, as you explained, it probably was already, you know, in the pipeline. It was already probably in production already. Whenever they say season two, because how many episodes will fall out? Eight, Ten eight, episodes? I, eight, I believe. Eight episodes. They were probably already yeah, they ordered in, in that from the beginning. Though. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, they ordered. They, they, it's literally the the idea, the way the way it is right now. It's like they're literally starting to show episodes while they're still in production on the on the pre on the next batch of episodes. Yeah, yeah. Remember they did the same thing with uh, that Twisted Metal show. Like uh, yeah. they had Mackie come out at the Game Awards. It's like, oh, we got renewed for season two. No, you didn't. They ordered that from the beginning. 
Yeah. They're already in production. Yeah, they so. make the they make the investment of the thing. They make the investment of it. You know that, and they're already working on those episodes already, or they're already filmed. Yeah. All right. Um, and that's pretty much it, man. So let's go over. Uh, what games we've been playing rich you and i will abstain from this one because <laughs> obviously we can't talk about uh stellar blade but we have been playing it obviously and, yeah. you're playing super mario I, I, I could say i've been playing it i could i could say that <laughs> yeah. so we, we could say that um and a lot of our peers obviously um did the same thing you know one thing i i did just to different because you know you're you were allowed to post a screenshot everybody just literally just took a screenshot from their playstation which is cool but i'm like i want to do something a little different i took a, a screenshot of my tv you know and it looked nice it was a, you know nice lighting that day um so yeah rich you know you and i we, will abstain from this part obviously but next week you rich and i will give you our full review of um of stellar blade man it's gonna be fun you know good stuff um, so I'm going to go down the line here. Um, Manny, have you been playing anything lately? I mean, I've just been hacking away at Hi-Fi Rush a, a little bit. And on PlayStation. Play a little bit on the PlayStation version. Uh, yeah, I mean, I haven't had a, a whole lot of a uh, lot of time, um, you know, as of late. But, you know, it's nice to be able to go over and play a little bit of something and then, you know, stop. So, yeah, that's what I'm doing. Um, Carlos, what have you been playing? Um, and is it chess? Uh, the answer is yes. The FIDE, uh, uh, candidates tournament is going on right now. So I got, uh, got motivated. Nice. So, yeah. been playing that. And, uh, uh, I, I, I haven't had time to play actual video games cause I, I binge watched, uh, and many and, and Brian will like this, uh, Pluto, which I finished, uh, which is great. Yeah, boy. <laughs> pretty, pretty good. Cool. Um, Brett, what have you? You should watch it, Tony. Yeah. It's a good one. What is what's Pluto? Was that? It's a. Uh, it's a. Uh, it's essentially a sort of cyberpunk retelling of an Astro Boy story. Hmm. Um. What? What is it? But it. It's. It's more in the line. No, no. I mean, of, I mean, like, what, what is it? Live action? Like, anime? What, what is this? Anime. Yeah, and since you're recommending it, I'm guessing it's not a bunch of fucking CG shit, you know? No, it's it's all it's all it's all uh, it's all animated. Yeah. So yeah, no, it's not a bunch of CG shit. Cool. All right, I'll put that on the list then. Thank you. Um, see, Manny, I listen to your recommendations too. You know what I like, you know? Um, yeah, it's I've, a good one. It's a, like so like I suggested it to. I mean, I did suggest it before to like um, to both Carlos and and. And uh, Brian, so I was like, "Yeah, I'll watch it." I, I I couldn't stop watching it. It was really good. Nice, um, Brett. What have you been playing lately, sir? Uh, I have been playing Dragon's Dogma two, and I have been. I'm still also playing. I'm still playing Baldur's Gate. Hmm. There's just so much Baldur's Gate. You know what's fun about Baldur's Gate? Even now, there isn't a day that goes by where I don't see somebody talking about it on Twitter. It's like Dude, that, that, you know? That that game, like, it, it, like a, I know it was gone for the announce of this, but like how it swept. It's the first game to win all five major gaming uh, Game of the Year awards. Yeah. It's, it's the first time, the first time the industry has all gotten together and went, yeah, that one. Like, holy hell, that is, that's pretty fucking big. I like, I know that Brian and I were like, y'all, y'all aren't ready for Larian, but like, I don't think either of us were prepared for it. I, I don't know. Uh, Brian, were you, were you ready for this level of acceptance and, and celebration? Cause I, I wasn't. Not this level, but I just assumed that it was going to be purely based on Baldur's Gate 2 and how much acclaim that got, but I didn't expect this much. Yeah, it's just. I had, I had high expectations that you guys surpassed them. So, um, this, that's that's great, and you know, it's also awesome to hear them say we're not doing Baldur's Gate anymore because it means <laughs> they're doing something else. They're doing another thing. Tell me that <laughs> isn't Brett. I think you were here for the episode. Tell me that's not the most pimp move ever. It's like, all right, we're done now. But like, damn, man, leave them waiting for more, right? No, <laughs> so, so good. I don't yeah. even like. I'm even mad. Like. No, that's like, baller. That is baller shit, man. 
respect. Yeah. You, it's like, oh, you, you guys do it. No, it, it, it <laughs> you, you know, you, you know what it is. You know what it is is because they're like now we're too big. It's like we we were we're jockeying to try to get Baldur's Gate for a year for years now from you, uh, Wizards of the Coast. Now you gave it to us, and you know what? It did well, and we say fuck you. And yeah. not to mention, <laughs> not to mention, and not and not, and not to mention. <laughs> Because I'm sure they want. Because I'm sure now what's the coast and and you know are saying, oh man, we really want them to do this. Oh, oh, oh. right. <laughs> but now they're like, nah, we ain't gonna do it. And not to mention, uh, what was it? The head of Wizards Co- of the Coast just recently stepped down. So it's a double whammy off of those guys. Those yeah, guys have oh. been, a bit, been a bag of dicks for a, for a fucking for like least for for the last few years now. God, Wizards of the Coast fucking suck. They suck. So oh yeah, no, I've been I've been seeing some of that drama, and not not to derail the conversation, Brett. Have you seen this drama with Warhammer? Jesus Christ, you know it's like no. What is the Warhammer drama? I'll, I'll tell you off air. We're not gonna get into that on air. Okay. Oh my god! I, I, I want to say this. I want to say this to some earlier in the year Wizards of the Coast shit, right? Like, because this baffles me. I've talked to a few people about it, and I had to be like, no, you're not wrong. Like that's not a, like so. Like just having been validated a couple times, I really have to say to the whole like. We're removing half orcs because they make you think of you know who race. Uh, first of all, no, I don't know who, uh, and I think that's a that's a you problem. I think that's a real big you problem. And if you say if you ever say, oh, that D and D race reminds me of you know who group of people, uh, go fuck yourself. I guess like that's just who who the fuck does that? That just sounds like a you problem. And then just to that's be a, like, that's oh, a, that's a, that, that sounds that sounds like some 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 sort of racism that that's on the person who's who thinks that th- who's attributing these things to other people. Yeah, no. yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, uh, like you you've internalized racism, and now are saying you're going to fix your internalized racism by not fixing the racism, but just stopping it from being public. And now you want what applause, award, a cookie? Like, here's the thing, don't. Don't associate half orcs with any group of people or elves or a like no group of people is a fantasy race, specifically the ones that are like half monsters. Like fucking come on. Brett, don't you see how this is all an effect to get rid of the racism by making sure that people of different races cannot mix with each other so that they're all pure? See, that's how you Shit. make sure that things aren't racist by making sure that people can't mix races together. You see, right? Yeah, and yeah. You know what? And you, why do you, we should go one step further and just solve the trouble by like just not mixing them, just giving them equal stuff, but you know, different, not in the same place. You mean segregate them? Separate but equal, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, like that's how you solve racism to make sure that people don't mix races. Yeah, you know? yeah, that's true. Problem so that, solved. There you go. So that there's certain races that are pure, if you know what I mean. <laughs> oh, man. And yes, that's a direct reference to that that guy in the mid century with, with the funny mustache. You know, probably Chaplin mustache. Um, all right, yeah. man. Um, so uh, yeah. yeah, and then not not to mention all the other garbage they were they were doing. You know, with the D and D franchise, where they're like saying, "Oh, hey, you know, uh, you can't," you know. What well, was it? Uh, any of your 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 games that are kind of uh, you know, jump off games that use our system? We're gonna charge you, and we own whatever you create. Remember? Oh that one? God, that yeah, was I yeah, that was, yeah. I remember. That was a brilliant one. All in all, in an effort to try to, to essentially try to make uh, make more money out of this stuff, and even the Boulder Skate thing is not uh, is not a good situation too because they're literally like. You know they're in the business of trying to make this digital. What was it that digital game board, right? Yep. And is it isn't the isn't the Baldur's? Aren't they like oh, oh like wait you can kind of do that with Baldur's Gate already and it looks better. Yeah, you know Baldur's Gate does like does everything that they had promised, but like in a way better way where like enemies actually have AI instead of just being a digital token that moves around. They have animations. They have the. It's it's everything that like if they release um, a a content creator or like a, a, a toolbox workshop toolbox I forget the word for it exactly 
Um, but the thing that people can use to like make their own DLC, make their own quest, and that would render Wizards of the Coast's digital subscription, like live service war chest thing that they're trying to launch that is basically a shittier version of Baldur's Gate. Um, it would render that completely useless. And so I'm sure that has led to all kinds of, heat of heated and turtle stuff. And I love the fact that Larian just kind of went like, we're done being restricted by your system. There's stuff we want to do that doesn't fit into D&D, so go fuck yourself. Like, I mean, the just, thing about it is they, they, all, they need to, all they need to do is just, you know, put out that, you know, put out the, the title that they're known for. And then they're like, now it just says from the creators of Baldar's Gate, right? You know, Larian Studios. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, Divinity 3. Oh, my God. Divinity 3. Yeah. There you go. But even then, I think they're working on a new thing. I think they might be working on a brand new IP. I forget where I heard it, but I... Oh, maybe if maybe they, ever, if they if they do if they do us a do a like a cyberpunk or future type one, I had heard that's what I had heard. That they're doing a cyberpunk thing, and I was like, "Oh my god, please let that be true." <laughs> All right, um, be like, yeah, be like, uh, "Hey, this is how you really do it." Oh, take that, <laughs> CD Projekt Red. <laughs> and I still think they did a good job. Of, and I mean, they did a good job, but they they did a good job at creating a a a a, 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 a game a, like an action, you know, an action game. But they didn't make an RPG. That's true. Yes. Yeah. Um. All right, Brett. Anything else you've been playing? Uh, Dragon's Dogma Two. Cool. How's that still treating you? Play the hell out of Dragon's Dogma Two. Nice. Um, Brian. So um. Yeah. Oh, so ahead. um. Brian, yeah, Brian, go ahead. Would you, would you, would you ever, would would you ever release your 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 Brett Pawn code? I can, yeah, it's I can make it public. Um, it's definitely there. Um, I, I think you can <laughs> search does, them anybody. As well. Does anybody? Does anybody in the? Does anybody uh, who's playing Bardo's Gate want to pl- have Brett as their pawn? Yeah, it's Dragon's Dogma. If you're on PC, you can just hire me. Yeah, and I guess you, know, you can have the sliders and now create and control me. That's just, that's weird, but yeah, cool. Let's do this. I, I I will join you for adventures. I guess as weird. Yeah. Brett Brett makes an, an amazing tank. He's he's pretty much just a uh, he's he's a lovely of lovely offensive person in the best <laughs> way possible. Like, that sounds about know, right. He'll just he'll charge head first and just take stuff out, you know, like he'll just headbutt things on purpose and he'll just throw things at 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 different creatures. It's fantastic. I mean once you picked up like a giant ice block and then you threw it at a Cyclops. And I was like, Yep. Okay. Yep. That makes sense. That's right. So yeah, um to answer Toby's question, mm-hmm. Dragon's Dark now, because that's go. all that is. Yeah. Um I'm I'm still just having fun. I unlocked one of the advanced classes, which is a trickster, which you pretty much play the game as a weed smoker, and that sounds funny, but it's actually really quite true because you go around um, <clears throat> uh, f- f- what's a good word for like swing stuff in your hand. I think swing stuff in your hand. I don't know. Yeah, but- like, truly, there's like a fancy term for that, you know. Like, no, I don't know. You look like a you look like a fire spinner, but with like a smoke thing. Okay, um, you basically swing around a incense stack, and this incense stack allows you to confuse your enemies while you sit back and watch them just fall over. <laughs> And I, I, I know that sounds wait. dumb, but that's true. I can't wait to get the, the class that allows you to combine the two different classes or more. Oh, yeah. I've I've seen that class, and I can already think of some pretty broken combos. Because there's one, there's one spell which basically regenerates your stamina at incredibly fast speeds. And then there's another class that uses up your, sta- your stamina to become a god. So... 
you can you can see where that's going. Nice. Like I I I just I just want to combine the weed smoking class where I can confuse everybody to fight amongst each other and uh the sorcerer class where I can light the ground on fire so that every time I like go into battle it's just people murdering each other and screaming and running around and everything's on fire just 110% chaos. It's going to be great. Oh uh, yeah, I I seen as one guy did this combo where he was the weed smoking class and he had three mages and all those three mages had one of the uh, the maester skills which are like the top tier skills in the game and he was able to down a drake in less than 20 seconds which <laughs> if you follow drake you know that's a really strong feat <laughs> I've been I've been breaking sorcerer like I I've just been d- dropping things I probably shouldn't be able to drop. I, I've can you guys talk about what what's been going on? Well, people have been sabotaging their uh, pawns as of late with the dragon curse. You haven't heard about uh, this yet. I have heard about. It. I just have not had new pawns in a while, so I've. I've, apparently, I've, apparently, I've you that. can get a, a person can get a, a dragon curse on them, which turns them into a dragon and will instantly kill everybody in the town if they go to sleep in the town. Oh yeah, um, I've yeah, I've heard of that. I just yeah, dragon's plague. Um, the yeah, pawns keep, plague, yeah. keep talking about it every now and then, but so far I've not seen one with that yet, and I and I keep checking just in case. And yeah, you I've gotta that, check their eyes because their eyes like glow or something. I've heard that one of the ways to fix it is to kill the pawn by, yeah. well, by killing it. So, so far everything is good, but I just don't know how you get it in the first place because surely there's there's something that triggers it. Um, I heard some people saying if you get grabbed, get grabbed, grabbed by a drake, then possibly that's how you get dragon's plague. But so far the drakes have not been living long enough to do that. So. Yeah, but safe. Yeah. All right. Um, anything else, Brian? Uh, I did Platinum Life is Strange on my birthday last week. So that was another year in the books. And I'm thinking that for my 35th birthday next year, I'm going to go for um, Final Fantasy 15. Ooh. Because it'll be my 35th birthday in the year 20, 2020. 35th birthday in the year 2025. And Final Fantasy 15. Some nice numbers there. Yeah, I like that. That's but cool. it's my 61st Platinum, so it's kind of like, uh, I need to fix that somehow. So yeah, that's that's the plan. Cool. All right. Um, And Chris, oh, by the way, we lost Brett, it seems. Uh-oh. Anyway, Chris, what have you been playing lately? He's man? probably he's probably he's probably become his pawn. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. yeah, go ahead. Uh, so I'm I'm still playing Alone in the Dark. I have been uh, switching it up a little bit, um, you know, with time with Olivia. So I got um, Princess Peach Showtime. So I've been playing that for her because she really liked oh, yeah. the ads. So I got it, and she loves the game, right? I'm trying to show her how to play it a little bit but mostly i end up playing it um and it's fun uh and i've been playing um the game adam uh recommended he gifted me on steam uh, hunt down and that that game's fun it's like old school side scroller reminds me of blackthorn oh interesting uh, from way back in the day yeah. yeah it's like that but it's a very cyberpunk uh themed <coughs> uh, and you're a bounty hunter and you just go hunt down gang members and all this stuff so that, that that one's fun. I've been playing that on Steam Deck. Nice. Um, and Rich, have you snuck in any other games, or it's just been solid late for you? Uh, there are a few things that I have been playing, but uh, I can't talk about those things either. Uh oh, <laughs> oh, man, swore to secrecy, you know. <laughs> right, fair enough. Um, but we will we will discuss all that in the future when the time comes. You know, unlike hmm. I'm just gonna say it. Unlike Tom Henderson, we don't break embargo around here. You know? <laughs> <laughs> we don't do that around Throwdown, man. <laughs> Wild stuff. 
All right, people, you already know, man. Um, we're done here. So do we have anything to plug? Rich, I'm going to go to you. What's going on with the coalition? So first and foremost, uh, I'm going to use this as an opportunity to promote I Am Negan. If you still would like to hear our review of I Am Negan, um, we covered uh, Carlos's favorite show of the year, uh, The Walking Dead, The Ones Who Live. <laughs> Yeah, so I, I would say if you are interested in hearing what we have to say, check that out. I also, again, want to plug the Invincible podcast. Yes, that was yes. an awesome discussion. So uh, check that out if you want to hear our thoughts. As for what's coming up, uh, well, let me just say next week is a very big week for games. Now, we already spoke about one game coming out. There's actually a lot of things coming out for, uh, based on what I heard the last couple of days. So uh, I would recommend that you all stay tuned to the website. I also would recommend that you check check out our Coalition Gaming channel because our very good friend Danny Martinez actually posted up two videos the last couple of days. One about Helldivers 2 and another one about Destiny because, you know, there's a Destiny expansion coming out sometime in June. So uh, check all that out because uh, there's a lot of stuff coming. And the last comment that I will make... Uh, obviously, as Tony already said, we cannot talk about a certain game that drops next week. But I do want to say this. When we started this podcast, Tony had a segment talking about an interview. I've also noticed that there has been a huge marketing push for this particular game. Yes. So is that a good or a bad thing? We'll tell you the answer next week on Throwdown. There you go. I love to tease that. That's how you do it. <laughs> Professional right there, people. You already know, man. All right. Um, so, yeah, we're done here, man. So make sure you follow through on Twitch and Twitter. Subscribe on YouTube. If you have been watching us, hit like, subscribe, and hit the bell to be notified if one of our premieres go live. And we go live same time as on Twitch, 1030 p.m. Eastern on Thursday and Sundays. You already know. And obviously, join the Discord gang where rumors and conversations are always popping shout out to you guys we get all the news from you you know all the good stuff you post and obviously where you leave your questions for the question show uh join a discord man we're always getting you know a couple of new people here and there um and you're all welcome to discuss gaming and other fun stuff you know uh throw down we're also on every podcast app on the planet throw down show two words throw down show and also throw down show.com to listen to past episodes uh links to everything down below. Once again, I was your host, Tony Polanco, and tonight I was joined by Emilio Lopez. See you next time. Chris Seeley. Hey, take care, everyone. Carlos Romero. Peace out. Richard Bailey Jr. Have a good weekend, everybody. And Brian Monjoma. In, in the wise words of an uh, internet personality, What's wrong with her face? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. That jaw, man. That jaw, son. <laughs> oh, yeah. shout out to Mr. Plinkett. Yeah, you already know. All right, yeah. I mean, go, go watch Mask from the 80s with Cher if you don't know what I'm talking about. Dennis. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. All right, people. You already know, man. Later.